Well, I don't think there is one silver bullet to create the digital single market. Um, essentially, my message is that part of making the single market really perform, uh, we have to tackle digital issues as part of a package. And I think we have to work both on consumer confidence and consumer issues, in other words, the demand issues, and also on the supply issues to get more businesses onto the net. Uh, and of course, all of that has to be underpinned by availability of broadband. So those are really the three elements that I'll be talking about today. The users' rights uh, directive that um, I was working on, indeed I've been working on that um, since 1999 because I was rapporteur for the first users' rights directive. So um, in 2009 we've enhanced some of those provisions based on real experience. Um, and th those are on a number of things. First of all, we have to make it easier uh, for consumers to be able to change their electronic communication provider. You know, we want more competition, we want more energy in the marketplace. So for example, they need to be able to transfer their number easily. Uh, we put in provisions for that. Uh, they need more information about the quality of service they get. What is the real speed of the broadband that we're getting? Uh, and also they need more, more pre-contractual information before they make a decision. Uh, and we don't want them locked in uh, to excessively long contracts because with the speed at which technology is advancing and new service offers coming in, it's quite clear that excessively long contracts, say longer than two years, are often disadvantageous for consumers, even though superficially they look quite good up front. So all of these things are now in and we are now depending on the regulators at national level, so Comreg in, uh, here in Ireland, uh, to deliver those. Uh, and we put in new provisions for the regulators to collaborate much more closely together through a new body of European regulators. And we'll also be putting pressure on them uh, to step up their consumer-facing activities. Uh, as part of the, the package we put through, so we had the Users' Rights Directive, but we also made some important reforms to the, the so-called e-privacy directive, which was actually an entirely separate set of revisions, uh, which I worked with my colleagues in the Civil Liberties Committee. Um, I think it's worth saying, first of all, there were some very important consumer advances in there which are also not well known, particularly about the requirement to notify consumers if you uh, ad inadvertently breach their data privacy, the so-called data breach notifications. Um, there's been, in my view, a rather um, disturbing debate about issues around cookies. Uh, I mean, the, the, the legislation and our amendments, when we drafted them, and our intent, which was agreed by us and the member states, was very clear. Uh, we do not want uh, to frustrate the operation of the, of the internet by requiring every cookie to have to be pre-approved. I mean, there was never any intention of that. Uh, what we did say was, though, uh, that when a site, when somebody accesses a site, and uh, the operator of the site wants to facilitate the use of, the, of that site by the consumer um, and, and do so by means of a cookie, then they should inform the consumer beforehand and give the consumer opportunity to consent to that um, and how their data is being used. Now, I have to say I am baffled. Uh, this has caused so much controversy. Uh, I've not been involved directly in that because in a way it was not part of my original brief uh, but, I mean, I'm happy to be engaged in that process because the debate has gone on between data privacy um, advocates and national governments. Uh, but it seems to me the political intent is very clear and if there still remain concerns, we should be getting back to that. Uh, and I'm ready to become re-engaged in the debate if necessary. Uh, on data protection, uh, the, we have to, to look at the general data protection directive. So the first point I would make is that at the moment we do have uh, a fragmented position. Um, for electronic communications providers, they're covered uh, by the general provisions of the e-privacy directive. But that doesn't apply to holders of data generally, whether it's online or offline. So, for example, things like data breach notification uh, definitely need to be incorporated into general data protection law. Uh, and Mrs. Redding has indicated that she will take the provisions that we, were, we drafted, because Parliament drafted those, in the e-privacy directive into the more general uh, domain. Now, that's just the first point. I think the, the, the real problem that we have is that we do not have um, a harmonised set of data protection rules across the European Union. Um, and yet, in the digital economy and the digital single market, and particularly as cloud computing moves forward, so consumers' data will be held in different countries um, and different parts of the cloud, that we do need to have a rationalisation of that. Uh, and that will mean a move, in my view, towards a common set of rules um, that will be enforced by regulators nationally on the lines of telecommunications with, a, with that network of regulators engaged 
in working closely together. Um, and so that a company will have a single data controller in one country in the European Union, but will then be responsible for data held in every part of the European Union, um, and there will be an interchange of information between the different regimes. Now, I think that's what Mrs. Reading may well propose. Uh, we're some way from the, from the proposal on reform yet. She's consulting on it at the moment. But on the other hand, I think the harmonisation rules will remain very difficult to do, as we've already seen in my area on consumer protection. Um, that harmonisation, uh, that, that people say, well, harmonisation is fine, pr but provided it's not at the level that's operated in this country or that country, because we think that's too excessive. And consumers in those countries will say, well, we're going to lose protection. So we have a difficult road ahead on this.